Hello, beautiful souls. How are you today? We're going to go on a journey. This is called the evolution of the guardians. If you are following and listening to Truth Resonates podcast, that is where I was guided to use that platform as the space that I share mission logs from the guardians. The first 10 episodes of Truth Resonates are detailed mission logs. It really starts when middle of the summer last year and um, missions were being presented to us from our command. And so they came through our, our Father Yogananda, Sanat Kamara, Source and Mother Sophia. And with each mission, we were humbled. We felt empowered to battle the darkness for the light, with the light. And every battle, every mission turned into another mission. I think that is the evolution of war, where you neutralize a layer and then more is revealed. And that can be said about your shadow work. That can be said about life. It's very parallel at times. So as we went through that, we understood on a completely different level the links at which the darkness will go to stop the success of source light. <clears throat> this was our day-to-day. -day. It became our day-to-day -day because uh, we were never on offense. We were on defense. We were functioning within our mission boundaries and guidelines, and then we would receive attacks because of what we're doing for the light. So this lasted the time frame, the rough time frame, without trying to get into actual dates, was like July 2023 till current. Now, somewhere around November 2023, we as a group, so multiple ones in our group, received in via our clairabilities. So either a vision, if we're clairvoyant or claircognizant, we had downloads or clairaudient, we heard messages that love is the key. Love is the key. And we started to receive more downloads of a very efficient, but loving way to process through shadow work using the love, forgiveness, gratitude triangle. And it worked so well. We, we advocate the use of love, forgiveness, and gratitude in any shadow work that anyone is trying to accomplish because it really does get to the root, the source of the shadow, the source of the pain. And then you truly heal from it whenever you're coming from a, a space of love, forgiveness, and gratitude. They are three hallmark emotions that we should all tap into when we're dealing with shadows to fully and completely release them and let them go and allow ourselves the healing that allows it to free us, free us from the bond of the shadow. So it was a game changer. We incorporated it in our own day-to-day -day life. We started to getting more and more visions, more and more downloads. And then we pushed it forth through our groups. And then of course, through messages and videos. And I know that it has helped many, many beings in their own individual shadow work journey. We immediately started to receive messages from space races, from intergalactic races, from emissaries that we worked with at the time it, we would receive it from um, the Arcturian Council and the Pleiadian and High Council and the Galactic Alliance and Space Force and different ones. That they could see and feel the sweeping changes that occurred with this powerful waves of love that would ripple through the universe. And that was very motivating. It was very motivating because we had been doing these 
these battles, these energetic battles and, and really waged in this war against darkness for many, many months. And we needed that love infusion. We needed it for ourselves and the world needed it. The universe needed it. So I knew that love waves in its essence and its core are, are powerful. That, and I give them all the credit. There was no doubt. But I had no idea at the time how transformative love, forgiveness, and gratitude would become. And I didn't fully appreciate how truly powerful love is. Over the course of the last several months, there were many targeted attacks against the guardians carried out by a large cohort of humans with allegiances to dark energy agendas and their common denominators are the ego. On occasion, we had some big intergalactic battles and these were sometimes with negative off-world witches. They were really not happy that we were um, retaliating. They were very used to being able to just send out curses, hexes, and spells with old world magic and all sorts of different things that they never anticipated us, these lowly humans with magnificent <laughs> souls, figuring out things in such a depth that we could go back and turn the tables on them. So they were very unhappy and we were okay with that. But it came with a price. There was always retaliation. And it it was this love wave of um, that was also it instigated them. It really angered them that we were sending love to some of the planets that they controlled, some of the star systems that they controlled. Then there were the Draco reptilians. They became a more prominent um, antagonist in our day to day life. And uh, it seems like there's always like a passing of the baton of who's going to be, you know, like the asshole of the day. And they had picked up the baton. And uh, so we faced it head on. And to their complete and utter narcissistic shock, we fought back and we destroyed them to a great deal. We beat them down to a great degree. Source, Mother Sophia, Archangel Michael, Archangel Metatron, Archangel Gabriel, Archangel Raphael, Archangel Uriel, and Archangel Zadkiel have taught us a lot. We have many warrior archangels that battle alongside of us. And it is always for the good of humanity. It is always for the greater good of all. With each battle, I grew, I started to grow weary because I, I said I can't emphasize it enough it was every single day on some level some form of attack was being received on our end and so we had to keep coming up with more intricate and layered ways to protect ourselves energetically the way in quotes, the way of unity, consciousness, love, compassion, kindness, and empathy was an ever present metronome in my being. It's a frequency within my soul. And it comes from Yeshua. Love is the key. That is the phrase that is on repeat. Love is the key. The dark ones aligned to beings like Aleister Crowley, Vlad, Kronos, and Rhea all had their orders and they were all the same. Stop the guardians at all cost. Our homes, our water, our food, our pets, our bodies were attacked daily. And this is not an exaggeration, nor is it a plea for any type of sympathy. This is simply part of the evolution of the guardians. We defended and then we would incorporate multi-layered protections, which took painstaking, meticulous steps in order to provide security for all of us. There was always an aspect that they exploited and was able to attack again. 
none of our protections have ever been 100%. After months and years, for some, of this, that metronome grew louder. Love is the key. Unity consciousness. Compassion. Love. Empathy. Forgiveness. Gratitude. But over and over again, love, love, love. I began to question many complex layers of transmissions we had received as I knew that there was something missing. I missed a key piece. There was something I had not recognized. Love is the key. Not coincidentally, at this time, it became a little murky in our direct messages from source. They became less and less. We went from daily, multiple times a day, communications direct from source creator, to maybe every few weeks. Love is the key. I would think about source. I would wonder why I hadn't heard from him. And I would hear, love is the key. I did discuss this with my soul sister, Aurelia, and she agreed that things were not adding up. Things no longer felt like freedom once the battles were completed, but instead had a heavy burden to it. My ego, my ego didn't let me see that truth fully and completely at that moment. I remained perplexed for months that there was some other battle plan taking place that I needed to figure out because I have a, I have a universe wide reputation for connecting dots. I need very little to go on and I can pretty much figure things out. And I kept going back there because that's how I had always processed and founding myself coming up empty except for one thing, that metronome. Love is the key. Unity is love, and love is the key. What are the missions, the mission for the guardians? What does it mean? What does it entail? I've detailed it several times, but in a nutshell, reunite with our soul family, assist them to heal and navigate back to sovereignty, the soul family members will then work together to initiate 5D systems in Hunamatea to elevate humanity via unity consciousness. Nowhere in there does it say battle and mission, battle and mission, battle and mission, dark strongholds and evil strongholds of the planet. But we did feel called. They were bringing it to our doorstep. And we were capable and we had permission. So we did. But again, love is the key. In fact, love is the key. And the frequency of love is the key that opens locked doors and unblocks the way. I get goosebumps when I talk about that. Ultimately, this is what I came to. Understanding love is the key and evaluating our defensive battles, I admitted that battles inherently are not loving. There's no way to enter into a battle and not cause harm. I reminded myself and the crew that with each great battle against evil, each time from last summer until this very moment, Mother Sophia would always come in and say, you were never meant to battle this evil. You were never meant to battle this evil, which I used to hear and perceive as us going above and beyond and servicing humanity in ways that we could never fathom. But that was actually my ego. In truth, we were never meant to battle that evil, period. That's what Mother Sophia was telling me, us. You are never meant to battle this evil. This is not your fight. Which complex, 
it, it, it perplexed me for a while because we were being attacked. They were bringing the, the attacks, the battles to our front door. They were harming innocents in our family, people that had absolutely beings that have absolutely nothing to do with this, but they, they don't really play by the rules. And so I kept believing that I was doing the right thing. In truth, although we uncovered all sorts of dark layers and plans and freed so many trapped souls and released so many dark strongholds, turning them from dark to light, what we did was we took it upon ourselves to enter into evil battles while also being supported by the divine, but it was not for us to do. After the battles, we would always get f follow up with them with a love wave. This is the choice that we should have made without the battle. After many months, I finally realized the missing piece that was never missing. It was there all along. It was right there in front of our faces. Give true love to our enemies too, because love is the key. I now choose not to battle any longer. I'll return all negative energy with true love. I've asked for grace and mercy on bended knee. I've asked source creator, Mother Sophia, and our archangel protectors to show us love with superb protections. And with that, we will fully prevent the painful effects of the psychic attacks and the energetic attacks that we've had over the last year and a half. I do have unshakable faith in source creator, Mother Sophia. And I have realized that while I do have that, I was also walking a little less than fully in my faith. The battles were stopping me. I had to reestablish my healthy boundary of realizing that that's not what we're here for. Yes, that was for a moment in time because of other very complicated circumstances. But it was really in our ego that we felt we should say, let's go kick some ass. And that's also not loving. So I humbled myself and I asked for forgiveness for going with that tactic of force overflow. Now I will only respond in love. Love waves are still a daily part of what we do because love is the key and love is truly transformative and very, very powerful. And I've seen it and I have felt it and I believe it more now than ever. Shortly after this statement was made to the crew and I discussed it with everyone, Source came in with some confirmation. This is the transmission from Source. Yes, you were both correct. Lucy said I was waiting. We were here observing the process of clues and truly your use or not of boundaries. The dichotomy between you and saying I quit, yet the will to continue fighting even when you felt it was too much. Lessons here are to understand, of course. It is perfectly acceptable to say no, this is not for me. Remember that. That's the boundary that I had missed. You finally gave yourselves permission to really stop and figure out why. And yes, enjoying the lighter feeling is beautiful. Leah, you knew with every cell that you felt more bogged down and you were forcing the feeling of joy. Again, force overflow. You knew it. It took Lucy putting into words what you struggled to describe, and it took being ready for it. You've all done so much more in all of your lifetimes that going the extra mile or 20 is what you always chose, and you chose the same thing here. Pull up your bootstraps and keep going. That is your programming. And now you see the fuller picture. Know that you all have done everything in goodness 
and there is no karma incurred due to your benevolent intentions. Remember how quiet I've been? Well, now we can press go on the timeline processing, the lessons learned, and the higher consciousness choices made. This is not a one and done. It is a continual opportunity to choose love. And more challenges are coming. Always choose love. If your choices are making you feel bogged down, is it following love guidance? How can it be adjusted or not? That is the litmus test that source is giving you the collective. When you navigate your own way, and maybe you get off the rails, maybe you get a little bit outside your boundaries and you don't realize it until something starts nagging you. Ask yourself, if your choices are making you feel bogged down, is it following love guidance? Are you tapping into true guidance and are you following within the boundaries you set for healthy boundaries? And how can it be adjusted if not? If you are tired of nonstop battles, if you are also one that is being negatively affected by dark energy, there is definite better ways to navigate this life. You do not have to sit there and be a victim unless you choose it. That is a choice for many. And they tend to just want to live in that point, that pain. It's more comfortable. They know what to expect than tipping into the the unknown depth of shadow work. But I do invite you to violetlotusenergy.com, select a QET sh session. We can get your energy clear of all the distortions, all the things that people have thrown at you and the world has thrown at you while you've been here. We get rid of the negative entities, the negative implants, all, all curses, hexes, and spells, hooks, daggers, bindings. Um, we get rid of the parasites in your third eye. And we help you clear the energy flow so that you can have a direct connection to source so that you can find your guidance and that you can define your healthy boundaries so that whenever you're navigating this really crazy world that we live in, you can make your highest and best choices for you. And then you can also navigate your way back clearly. When, when you're clear, you can receive your guidance. When you're clear, you can tap into those messages, those niggling thoughts in your life. There's just, there's a nuance there. There's something that is not being uh, figured out fully and completely. Whenever we have distortions in our energy body, it truly distorts the message. That's why we call it distortions. It's not a true, it's not clear what comes through. When the ego is involved, even when it's very mild, it can have big, big repercussions. So as someone who is constantly working on myself and doing shadow work and constantly trying to evolve, I do see this as an evolution of the guardians where we absolutely 100% understand the power of love, the power of forgiveness, and the power of the divine. We are definitely aligned to the divine and we endeavor to continue to be that way. So it's going to take some course correcting from time to time. And this is just part of the evolution of the guardians. Thank you for joining me today. And I'll see you again next time. Take care.